Okay, so now we're at a very exciting step here. We have people in our chat bot, and for whatever reason they did, they did not take the next step. They did not sign up for our monetized services or products, but we want to re-engage them. In fact, maybe for the first set of interaction, you don't even want them to buy anything. You just want to give them the warm and fuzzies, which is okay too. I do that myself. So now let's understand how we can go to the section called Engage. Now it will tell you right there that you cannot reach people outside of a 24-hour window. I don't know if you can hear this, but I had to uh, pause the video here in New York City during COVID shutdown. In fact, I just found out that the uh, governor is going to shut down New York City. Today's uh, the 15th of April. I'm sorry, today's the 16th of April. They're going to shut it down until May and possibly beyond. So every day here in the city at 7 o'clock, they come out and they give a big thumbs up and clap and ring bells and, f and fire trucks ring their horns for the first responders and also the other people, the grocery people, the delivery people, everybody that's making our life somewhat comfortable. So I'm going to pause the video and come right back after this uh, is going on outside my window across from Central Park. So I also want to share something with you. I want you to be proud that you're a chatbot marketer. That's gonna separate you from the other, I hate to say this word, spam, spam, hack clowns. Scam, spam clowns that use Facebook, I'm sorry, that use email marketing to basically endlessly, endlessly offer you bullshit, okay? So you can rest assured because you use a chatbot, more specifically a Facebook chatbot, because chatbot, Facebook will not let you get away with nonsense. So be proud of the fact that you don't spam people. Hopefully you don't scam people either. Hopefully, yes. Um, so that's part of the chatbot experience, that you're not allowed to re-engage somebody after a 24-hour window. So let's explore how that happens, how that works, and what our options are. So if we come in here, we want to do something called a trigger. We want to add a trigger. Now a trigger can be based on whatever you want to base it on. In this particular case, within a 24 hours equals yes. Now in this particular case, we only have one reachable person, which is me. Now you'll notice that there's other people in that list. These are some previous classes that I've done and those people are in my chatbot marketing program from months pa past. So they are not eligible at this point. So we can come down here and say, okay, when do I wanna trigger this interaction? We wanna trigger this interaction based on a user attribute, okay? Maybe they're on our subscriber list. That's a user attribute. Or after their last interaction, or after their first interaction. First interaction, which means the first time that they interact with us, which means the first time they became a active member, meaning visited equals yes. Now, what I would do, I definitely would have no use for setting up more stuff a minute later what I typically do is go about 45 minutes later. Now, think about that. This is based on, I typically have a series of videos, subsequent videos that maybe last 15, 20 minutes. I want to give people the opportunity to chew on it or, you know, I'm in no rush for business. Business is good. So I think 45 minutes or an hour, or if you want to do two, three hours, if you really want to be passive about that, it's totally up to you but I probably would not push the envelope in any sooner than 45 minutes. Again, that's based on my experience and it works like a charm. So let me hide the camera for a second. So you would say, okay, I wanna interact with this person, but, you know, 45 minutes after their first interaction. Now, unfortunately we can't test this right now. Now, if I set that to a minute, you could see a test, but take my word for it, it works. So we would then have to basically write out our message. So I'm gonna do that and come right back. So I'm gonna start with a text box. I'm gonna put in some type here and come right back. Now again, you wanna be you know, somewhat, I wrote, hey, first name, hey, Joe, G Jennifer, Tila, Christine, et cetera, et cetera. I wanna thank you kindly for your engaging with my, of course, spelling, spelling. Robert has to learn how to, more importantly, Robert has to learn how to proofread before he hits the record button. Now at this point, you can choose to put an option for either quick reply or to do something else to get them to take some other kind of action. Now notice over here that there's a red dot. That red dot basically tells you that this is still in preview mode. 
that you haven't done anything with it. So if, in fact, you want to make that live at 5 and go live, meaning that you want to adhere to after the 45-minute interaction, then you hit set link. So that means it's now, notice that the red dot disappeared, that means it's now on autopilot. So the other thing you can do, and I've used this to great success. A lot of times my videos, I try to keep my videos short, three to five minutes, and maybe there's a series of four or five, six of them. So you can actually set a user attribute for every time they watch a video. So you could say, watch video one, watch video, and then you put one watch video, then you put two, et cetera, et cetera. So you could basically define this for your sending out to a trigger, user attribute equals three, which means out of your five part video, they only watch three. So then you could send them a message saying, hey, I noticed that you only watched three of my five videos. Did you have any more questions? Was there an issue? What, again, it gets back to you can have intelligent engagement with your users, with your audience, with your customers, with your fans, with your whatever, if you have the right information. You can ask intelligent questions if you know who you're talking to and what they did and what their experience was. So I can't overemphasize, you can't get that from email. You can get that from a chat box because it's totally up to you and I want you to be excited about this. It's totally up to you what kind of experience you want to share with your audience. So they'll get a big kick out of the fact of how does he know that I only watched the third video. Now, the paranoid people, oh, geez, big brother's watching. Eh, what are you going to do about that? Okay. Now, at the same time, for every interaction and for every re-engagement, definitely give them the opportunity to subscribe or unsubscribe. So you may choose to put that down here in a quick reply. So if I go back to my quick, supply, quick reply and I put subscribe, I'll just, put, I'll just make this simple, subscribe and unsubscribe. You get the idea, okay? And then that would go to the subscribe button. That would go to the unsubscribe. Now, if you want to make it totally brain, brain or uh, uh, if you, actually I should probably hide the camera, otherwise you're not going to see what I'm talking about. So if you do a quick reply in here, that might be an alternative. But keep in mind, you can also put in the, by the way, you can always subscribe or unsubscribe by typing in join or cancel. Something that they may have forgot from before. And for some reason, Robert forgets how to type. So I cannot overemphasize enough how you want to create the very best user experience and the easiest way for them to opt out. Well, Robert, I don't want to make it easy. Well, no, you do want to make it easy for them. Because if you make them jump through hoops, they're going to remember that and you're going to say, this guy, I'm never going to deal business with him again. And they're probably going to tell their friends. I tried to get out of his chatbot nonsense, crazy wackiness, and it was like a hoop jump. No, I don't want that done to me. I'm sure you don't want it done to you. So if a person wants a refund, yeah, you want to kind of try to give them alternatives to that. But if they have their mind made up, there's really nothing you can do about it. Okay? There's a, more customers out there. There's another day. When I was a kid, 11, 12 years old, I had a crush on my neighbor across the street, Teresa, who was two years older than me. I was absolutely madly in love with her. And in my mind, we had a relationship, which we didn't, by the way. But I saw her one day at Tommy's Pond. I grew up in in touch in New Jersey. And I saw her at Tommy's Pond with a guy named Tommy, strangely enough. And it broke my heart because she was my girlfriend, even though that was not true. In my mind, she was. In my 11-year-old mind, my 13-year-old girl friend across the street, friend, female friend. But it wasn't true. So I went home in tears, crying. My mother consoled me. Uh, my mother, rest her soul, will be 80 years, would have been 80 years old tomorrow, April 17th. Um, she had me when she was 19. Anyway, I'm going to miss her tomorrow. I miss her every day. So I'm trying to share with you that I started crying and boo-hoo-hooing. She's holding me. And I said, Teresa doesn't love me. It's okay. So she said to me, now I don't know if this is child abuse or not. She said, 
when I was a kid, I, I, even though my name is Robert, when I was a kid, I went by Bobby. When I turned 18, no more Bobbies, no more Bob, it's Robert. She said to me, relationships are like the bus. You miss the first one, there's another one by in 15 minutes. Well, that was very good advice because I've used that throughout the rest of my life to always stay positive. Okay, so you lost your job. There's more jobs out there. Okay, so you lost this customer or this opportunity. Now, if it's something that you did where you screwed up, hopefully you learn from that mistake. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. You can make as many mistakes as you want. I've had a lot of failed businesses in my life. I had a failed jazz club when I was 28 years old. But because of that failed jazz club, I got into software. Because when I had my jazz club, and every time I wanted to make a flyer or a poster, $50 here, $200 there. So when my jazz club went out of business, unfortunately, in fact, how do you make a million dollars in a jazz club business? You start with two. It wasn't that bad, but it was pretty bad. So a friend of mine said, <clears throat> excuse me, why don't you get yourself a Mac and teach yourself desktop publishing? And I was like, well, what's that? So because of that, because of my failure, I'm now talking to you 33 years later. And I never looked back. I taught myself software. I pulled my hair out at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I got better and better and better and made mistake, mistake, got better, mistake, mistake, better. So this concludes kind of volume one of my free tutorials. If you have any questions, I'm here to help you every step of the way. I don't want to hear from any of you guys or girls. Oh, I didn't want to bother you, Robert. I thought you were busy. No, no, I want you to bother me. I want you to reach out to me. I want to be able to help you every step of the way. Because if you're successful, I'm successful. Thanks again for being here. Hopefully this is a good start and this really opens your mind and the possibilities. In our next volume, we're going to go into some really cool things. I should have that volume finished hopefully this weekend. It's now April 16th, 2020. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do comments. If somebody comments on your post in your Facebook, you can get this reaction, et cetera, et cetera. So thanks again for being here. Stay home, stay safe, stay positive. And remember, nothing happens if you choose to do nothing. Carpe Diem 2020. Have a good day.